domination of the qualifying practice for the British Grand Prix support race gives Nicolas Minassian pole position for this, the most important round of the Autosport British Formula 3 Championship of the season. Fastest man in pre-event testing is second on the grid, Mario Harberfeld in the Martin Donnelly racing car, looking very, very confident indeed. Third on the grid for championship leader Johnny Kane, only fourth last time out, and he will be hoping to improve his chances here for Paul Stewart Racing. And coming man from Australia, Mark Webber, looking very impressive indeed. Fourth on the grid. Behind those two Delara Mugen Hondas, the first non-Delara, the Tom's Toyota-powered chassis of Kevin McGarity. The Ulsterman lines up fifth, and alongside him, Brian Smith, another engine in his Delara. It's a Mitsubishi, so it's Renault, Opel, two Mugens, a Toyota, and a Mitsubishi. A good spread of chassis, a good spread of engines, and a good spread of spectators basking in the sunshine. And as the cars are ready to go, the lights come on, away they go, a very slow start from Polman Minassian, yellow flags wave furiously at the back of the grid, somebody has had a problem, no signs of a collision, but it looks as though then somebody must have stalled into Cops for the first time. Just ahead of us as we ride with Peter Dumbreck is Enrique Bernoldi, the second of the Renault-powered Delaras, and he also has had a slow getaway. But the slowest getaway of all for Martin O'Connell, the national championship leader. He'll have to overtake the ambulance on his way down to Cops for the first time. So it's Harberfeld, Kane, and in third place, Weber. Weber has overtaken the Renault, but Minassian coming back at him. Well, the Renault engine improvements really are showing very strongly indeed. So what a shame he had that slow getaway, but Nicolas Minassian may well make his presence felt in this race. Riding again with Peter Dumbreck. We're following the Ulsterman, Kevin McGarity, as Dumbreck goes a little bit wide. Dumbreck in seventh, and Kevin McGarity battling with Brian Smith right ahead of us. Two cars side by side there as they came through the veil. Down they come to club corner now. And through goes the leader, Harbour Felt, second Johnny Kane, third Minassian, fourth Weber, and then the Brian Smith, Kevin McGarity, dice ahead of Dumbreck. So those are the top six and seven places. Out of Abbey, flat out through Bridge Bend, and then hard on the brakes. You can hear Dumbreck banging on the rev limiter as he holds the gear. Down again into Brooklands, 40 miles an hour, second gear, accelerating, little burst of power, the car fishtailing, no aerodynamic effect there, the 225 brake horsepower fighting his way just through the rear tyres, out of Luffield, third, fourth, fifth gear across the start-finish line and heading down to Cobbs. And as he turns into Cops at 155 miles an hour, Mario Harberfeld has again extended his advantage. Well, the young man in the Martin Donnelly racing, Delara, has got clear road ahead of him, and he's got a significant margin now ahead of Johnny Kane in second place. The Ulsterman leads the championship. His teammate, Peter Dumbreck, is second overall in the points. Dumbreck, though, down in seventh, so this is looking already to be a very good race for Johnny Kane. Now, Mario Harberfeld has not got experience of winning in Formula 3, but Johnny Kane has. That may tell in the end as well. Slip streaming battles all the way down, almost three abreast as Peter Dumbreck looks down the inside of Kevin McGarity. Thinks better of it. Turns in safely. So some good clean racing going on here. The third place battle. You just saw Nicolas Minassian still with the Aussie. Mark Webber right behind him now. Dumbreck lost a little bit of time there having a look. A bit of a feint perhaps down the inside of McGarity just to remind him he's still there. Dumbreck was well offline at Stowe, and now he'll have to worry about the cars behind him, a little lock-up, McGarity gets a bit of a wiggle on as well, and that's given Dumbreck an opportunity to close. Down to bridge we come again now, flat out through bridge, and again here in banging on the rev limiter, he looks down to the inside, compromises his line just to try and frighten McGarity into a mistake, and now under pressure from behind, Peter Dumbreck, that's Jamie Spence. Now, it's the first time we've seen these uh, green and yellow machines. There are a pair of them for Tommy Field and Jamie Spence. Jamie Spence, the more experienced of the two drivers, run by the DKS team. They've been promising to come out in Formula 3 for a number of races, but have decided to wait until the car was properly sorted. And Jamie Spence doing a very good job indeed. 
running two cars here in Formula 3, also running a Formula 3000 team, so a very ambitious uh, operation indeed. Very ambitious operation at two is Martin Donnelly racing, the Ulsterman awesome, of course, former Lotus driver, retired after his enormous accident in Spain in 1991, set up his own team in the junior categories, went into Formula Vauxhall, but has worked his way up now to being one of the Formula 3 front runners. And just looking down the inside of Jamie Spence goes Guy Smith, his Delara Opal. Jamie Spence holding on there. Ricardo Maurizio, who Guy Smith was battling with in the early going, just keeping a holding brief, a couple of car lengths behind them. So Harberfeld motoring on serenely now, kicking up a little bit of dust on the exit there. And down he comes to club corner. 85 miles an hour, third gear corner. Smith streaming through. Guy Smith a couple of lengths back now from Spence. Again, that move costing him time. Riding with Dunbreck then, out of Ridge, into Brooklands. Runs a bit wide, ooh, dear, oh dear, onto the gravel, onto the grass. And he has definitely lost a place. You can see in the back of the shot there that Jamie Spence has moved up and coming around the outside, or trying to come around the outside as they go two by two through Luffield was number 18, Guy Smith. And here is the national class battle. There is the Ray Rowan run, car number 50 of Martin O'Connell. Just outbreaking Jeremy Gumbly, or outpowering him, more properly, I suppose, through bridge, side by side. Brave stuff indeed. And O'Connell back into his traditional position in the lead of that class. In fact, more accurately, his traditional position is mixing it with the front runners. Perhaps on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit, the age of his chassis, it's uh, one of the more than year old classes, is in fact it's a 96 car, would not have been such a disadvantage. Silverstone here really comes down a lot to engine power and setup. And had he not had that problem stalling from a very fine 12th qualifying position, he could perhaps be running in the top 10 now. So Johnny Kane, championship leader, we're watching him just as a flash of Mario Harberfeld goes past at the bottom of the screen, riding with his teammate Peter Dunbreck. Don't worry about the filth on the lens. It is filth, it's not water. It's a hot and balmy afternoon at Silverstone, despite the rain in the days leading up to this Saturday afternoon race, just after Formula One qualifying. Now Dunbreck, you can hear the engine again, popping and banging as he's on the rev limiter. And ahead of us, the green and yellow car of Jamie Spence. Oh, Spence takes to the dirt exactly as Peter Dunbreck did the previous lap, but Spence keeps his boot in and around it goes. So Peter Dunbreck gets back one of the places that uh, he lost. Ahead of him, you can still see the red car of Kevin McGarrity. And there is McGarrity, number 16, and he's hounding Brian Smith still. So McGarrity very dogged in his pursuits. Big battle, three-way dice here. Number nine, Michael Bentwood, hanging on behind Riccardo Maurizio and Paula Cook, coming all perilously close to the pit wall in the number 19, the second of the DC Cook entries. Guy Smith just uh, three or four spots up the race track ahead of him. Look back again, you can see the cloud of dust and Jamie Spence just tries to keep the power on, just gets back on the throttle, perhaps chasing that throttle a little early there before the car was fully stabilised, and around she went. So Jamie Spence dropped a couple of spots in that little incident, but the experienced driver that he is kept the engine running and is still in the race. So too very much is Mario Harbour felt. Now Johnny Kane is really struggling to keep pace with this man. Clearly the Paul Stewart racing machine is not as well set up. He's keeping uh, just a, a sufficient margin ahead of Nicolas Minassian to uh, stop the Frenchman thinking about any rash overtaking manoeuvres. It would have to be deaf, dumb and blind to try and manoeuvre from that far back anywhere on the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit. So Johnny Kane at the moment has breathing space to wonder where he's going to find an answer to the speed of Mario Harberfeld. Similarly, Minassian there in third place, the blue and yellow Renault-powered car with Mark Webber a couple or three car lengths behind him. So the Australian, although he's looking threatening, 
is not actually in a position to make a move. But we've already seen that Weber lost out just in sheer acceleration coming out of the Beckett's complex. He passed Minassian on the first lap through Beckett's when the Frenchman was still recovering from his uh, slow getaway. There's Yudai Igarashi off in the gravel. And his Dallara Mugen Honda will go no further. That's at the complex. Yes, we saw Manassian then coming onto the straight behind Weber and basically just driving past him. So the work that the Promotechnic company have done on this two-litre four-cylinder Renault Formula 3 unit has been very, very much rewarded in terms of uh, higher output. And the Mugen Honda engine ahead of him in Johnny Kane's machine being hampered in its efforts to propel him around the circuit by some problem with the setup of the car in the slower corners Kane really seems to lose out and hold his own through the fast sweeps and there are still a number of them at Silverstone more this year in fact as the Grand Prix circuit's been revised yellow flags out at Brooklands and Priory as the leaders arrive you can just see on the big diamond vision screen Igarashi's car being craned out of the gravel because it's there that he had gone off so to recap, Minassian still leading Kane now under more pressure from Minassian. Minassian is fighting his way back into this and so is Mark Webber. With two cars close ahead of him making a, a bigger hole in the air than one on its own, Webber is coming closer and still the battle goes on for fifth place. Brian Smith and Kevin McGarity fanning out two by two on the straight. And who'll come through? Well, Smith still holds it from McGarity. And onto the gravel at Cops goes Peter Dumbreck. That is a very, very quick corner to go off at. They're turning in there at 150 miles an hour. They do not lift. Well, they do, but they come down to about 149 miles an hour if they're not feeling particularly brave. And uh, Peter Dumbreck, glad, I'm sure, to get away with that. His heart rate will have notched up another few points, well up into the 200s. But Ricardo Maurizio accelerates past him on the run down to Stowe, Dumbreck down to 10th. Fourth place, hounding Frenchman Nicolas Minassian in third place. Ahead of them, Ulsterman Johnny Kane second. Very international flavour to this championship as ever. Brazilian Mario Harberfeld leading the race. Johnny Kane in second here but leading the championship. Nicolas Minassian third, both in the race and in the championship. And his early season run of form was really thwarted by a 30-day ban that he had to serve after an unfortunate incident for the Thruxton race. But Manassian's still in, I suppose, mathematically, if he gets his slide rule out with a chance of getting back into the battle for the championship lead. But between himself, there he is in the number six machine, and Mark Webber, the man right behind him in the championship, there is but one point. So not only are they dicing for third and fourth here on the racetrack at the Silverstone British Grand Prix support race, but they're also dicing for third and fourth in the championship. Johnny Kane leads the championship on 111 points from his teammate Peter Dumbreck on 99. And we've already seen Dumbreck slide down the order into currently 10th position. A bit of a reversal of fortune because he won the last round of the championship at Alton Park. Whatever problems the Paul Stewart racing cars have seems to be affecting both of them. So, Harberfeld leads it. Kane, Manassian, Weber, close as you like. Behind them, Smith and McGarity on his own now. Guy Smith and then Ricardo Maurizio and Peter Dumbreck now under pressure once more. Ben Collins in the white, red and black machine. Number three there with his Mitsubishi power looking to challenge the Paul Stewart racing machine and they are queuing up behind Dumbreck because Enrique Bernoldi is right behind this battle. Through goes Smith, Bernoldi with him. Oh, very good move indeed by Jamie Spence. Jamie Spence, the green and yellow machine there, number 24, we saw him spin a while ago. Recovered very, very well indeed to dive in behind Ben Collins and to pick up a couple of places. So again, through Brooklands and Priory, and then into the long right-hander at Luffield. Kane has Minassian in very close company indeed. Let's
Let's see what the Frenchman can manage. Accelerating here, third and fourth gear, fifth they snatch as they get to the line. Building up very rapidly to 150 miles an hour and just turn the wheel right, in they go. This time has McGarity got it there, very, very compromised on their line, both of them. Edging over towards the pit wall, McGarity, can he hold on? No, alongside him again comes Brian Smith. Now this is a fantastic scrap, absolutely marvellous, wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing at 150 miles an hour. You really can't ask for better than that. And people say that Formula 3 is dull. Well, I'm afraid they're absolutely wrong because again, Nicolas Minassion is looking to make a move. Johnny Kane almost hugging the grass down the hangar straight to deny the Frenchman the chance to come up the inside. And he makes it through the corner. Minassion very close indeed. Mark Webber just with the Frenchman. And this is a very intense three-way scrap. Weber, the young Formula Ford racing prodigy from Australia, last year won the Formula Ford Festival, the World Cup, if you like, of Formula Ford racers, moving straight up into Formula 3 without so much as a glance at any of the intermediate categories, doing a very good job indeed. Martin O'Connell on the move, looking around at the back of Michael Bentwood's white machine there, the number three car. And oh, O'Connell jinking left, right and centre, finally gets him exiting the Vale into club. 90 miles an hour, third gear corner club. Meanwhile, back with the leaders on the second, third and fourth place battle at any rate. Starting another lap, 15 laps of this Grand Prix circuit is the duration. And it looks as though Mark Webber is ready to pounce. He may not need all of those laps. Indeed, he does a very, very quick run indeed into the first corner. And Mark Webber goes well past the Frenchman up into second place. Enrique Bernoldi, his teammate, just squeaks past. Goodness me, that was close. Peter Dumbreck moves down another spot now. Dumbreck down into 11th and in danger of not scoring points. If that slide down the order continues, well, Weber is wise the second time around. Wise to the power of the Renault engine behind him, that is. He's not going to be caught a second time like that. And no matter how many times Minassion jinked from side to side down the hangar straight, oh, just locking a wheel, trail breaking into the corner there. Weber was not going to leave the door open on the inside. So, Harberfeld now, and what a lead he's got. That must be the best part of four or five seconds from Kane, from Weber now, from Minassion, from McGarity in fifth place. Now, can Kevin McGarity get onto the back of that second, third, fourth place dice? That would be interesting indeed to see the Tom's Toyota bringing a bit of chassis uh, changes into this little group. All three Delaras, Delaras in the top four now. Variety and engine manufacturer, undoubtedly. But it'd be just nice to see McGarity getting into the mix here. Minassian having a little bit of a suck it and see. Dropping back a length or two to ponder what's going on while he allows his car to run in clean air, perhaps freshen up the tyres a little bit. Interested to see Mark Webber's line there, right on the white line on the very extreme left-hand side of the circuit before he jinked into Cops, using every centimetre of the road available to him. Be very careful with the curbs, though. Now then, is Webber in a position to make a move on Johnny Kane? I don't think so this time. Kane second, Webber, Minassian third and fourth, then McGarity, then Smith. Then Smith, and then Ricardo Maurizio, Ben Collins, Jamie Spence, Enrique Bernaldi. Goodness me, and you have to look a very long way down the order for Peter Dumbreck. I would say that Peter Dumbreck at the moment will not score a point from this race. And for the man who's second in the championship, that might be very bad news indeed, because his teammate, the championship leader, Johnny Kane, is in second and a bag full of points will go his way to further extend his advantage if he can keep that position. So Kane second, Weber third, Manassian fourth, and still Johnny Kane with not a comfortable margin, but a margin. Out of Brooklands they come, into Luffield. 
Second gear in Luffield still. Accelerating now. Allowing the car to slide a little bit, not too much. Just not trying to wrestle it back under control too severely. Pit boards are out, waving furiously as the drivers come past. McGarity, Brian Smith, and then Guy Smith behind him. The commentator's nightmare. Not Brian Smith particularly, but the fact that there are two of them. Well, Mario Harberfeld's race here may well help him in championship position terms. Come on to terms, maybe even leapfrog with Asion or Weber. If they have a collision, and that's not looking entirely unlikely at the moment. Because as Weber tucks into the slipstream of Johnny Kane, and Asion's looking down the inside. Weber loses out on this one. It does he? No, he's going around the outside. Absolutely fantastic stuff. 155 mile an hour turning and a little wave to Johnny Kane saying, thanks, mate. Thanks for not knocking me off at that speed. Well, very reminiscent of Nigel Mansell's move on Nelson Piquet many years ago in the British Grand Prix around the outside at Stoke. It's not really an acknowledged overtaking position because you do leave yourself so open to a very, very high speed off. But Johnny Kane, who's now sliding under braking there for uh, club corner. Johnny Kane left him the room. There wasn't much of it, but he left it to him. And Weber saying, well, if you touch me now, we're both going to go off in a big way. And Kane, I think, acknowledging that. A good, clean move. Fantastic stuff from Mark Weber. Kane now under pressure from Nicolas Minassian. Minassian has seen exactly how and what is necessary to overtake at Stowe, courtesy of Mark Weber. And where's Johnny Kane? Johnny Kane has disappeared. Minassian comes through with Kevin McGarity right behind him. Now, McGarity was nowhere near Minassian as they came out of bridge. So Minassian's had to slow, and that is why Johnny Kane is out of the race. He's on the gravel at the outside of the right-hander at Luffield. He's looking at his back wheel, and it appears to have a flat tyre on it. So Johnny Kane is out. Weber second, Minassian up to third again. Just trying to study the front of Minassian's car. Well, the, the wing appears to be flapping away furiously, whether that's a result, perhaps, of some sort of contact. Certainly, Manassian had to back out of the throttle for some reason because McGarity is right with him now. Now, this is interesting. The Tom's Toyota chassis, the Tom's Toyota engine, is every bit of a match in a straight line now for the Renault Delara ahead of it. And just that, in terms of uh, progress for Tom's, would be very, very heartening indeed. Harberfeld running away with it now. Mark Webber, very comfortable indeed. Thank you, in second place. And Frenchman Nicolas Minassia, well, he has had a busy race, hasn't he? Either pressuring somebody or under pressure all the way through from pole position. And Kevin McGarity is really applying the pressure. But now into the final couple of corners comes Mario Harberfeld. I'm sure McGarity would have tried a little bit harder if he'd realised this was the final lap, but he didn't. Thought he could have got past the Frenchman easily, but the chequered flag now awaits. Mario Harberfeld, the Brazilian, about to take his first Formula 3 victory, and he does so. The Martin Donnelly Racing Team waving over the pit wall. Second for Mark Webber. Just look how delighted Mario Harberfeld is. Third for Minassian, fourth for McGarity, and then Brian Smith, fifth from Guy Smith. So Mario Harberfeld delighted with his first victory and they're right in the middle of the centre in the dark glasses. Martin Donnelly, his team boss, and he knows a lot about winning in Formula 3. Johnny Kane still leads the championship from Peter Dunbreck. 